Hey guys, it's Nabil. I'm back in the saddle after last week's pretty uh, devastating news. Um, so uh, for those of you who may have missed it, last week we got the news that the radiation didn't work, uh, which means I won't be moving on to surgery. Um, I was really hoping for a, a clean sort of, you get your chemo, you get your radiation, you get your surgery, cancer never comes back. That was kind of my hope. Um, it's not very common, uh, but it does happen every now and then for even stage four cancers. Um, pretty rare, but it does happen. I was hoping for that, it didn't happen for me. Uh, and so now we're moving on. Um, and uh, yeah, um, one verse that came to my mind, um, I talked about it during the last uh, video was that of Lazarus. And I went back and read it and um, I actually wanna read it with you. Uh, so not just the verse, but the passage. So I'll probably be doing some comments as we go. All right, this is John chapter 11. <clears throat> now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. So uh, right now, the scripture expects us to know Mary and Martha, and it tells us why. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So this is the woman who had wiped Jesus' feet with ointment. By the way, I'm reading the ESV version if you care to follow along. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So we see here that illness can glorify God. Uh, and so you have those who would say um, that uh, illnesses can be for the glory of God um, and that we should just accept what we get. Um, if you've if you've been sick, then glorify God through it. No need to um, really beg God to get rid of the sickness. Uh, I find that to be a false conclusion. Um, this certainly says that illnesses can glorify God, but what do you have? You have Martha and Mary sending for Jesus to heal him, and even still, the person, uh, the sickness is going to glorify God. We know. I mean, spoiler alert, Lazarus is going to be raised from the dead. Uh, so we know that this sickness is going to be defeated, and that is how it's going to be glorifying to God. Um, I'm not saying that being sick uh, and, and not being healed doesn't glorify God. If you suffer well for the sake of Christ, uh, you are certainly glorifying God. Um, if you join your sufferings to those of Christ, you can certainly glorify God. I'm not saying that's not true. But in this specific case, the scriptural case in which a sickness brings glory, glory to God will be because of the raising of the person who is ill. Let's keep going. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Um, lots to be said here, but I don't want to go too long on this video. So let's, let's keep moving. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Uh, this is another duh disciples moment. Uh, <laughs> I got that from Ben Witherington, sorry. Anyway, so the disciples don't quite get it, and so Jesus says to them, um, it, so the scripture says, Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he, was, he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciple, his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Check it out. People always call Thomas Doubting Thomas. I don't think that's cool because before he doubted, he was the one who said, well, Jesus is about to die. Let's go die with him. Uh, so he's stalwart Thomas or Braveheart Thomas. Um, if I were Thomas and I only doubted once and for the rest of uh, <laughs> history, people know me as Doubting Thomas. Um, I would be pretty upset by that. So coming alongside you, Thomas, you're awesome. He says, let us also go that we may die with him. Okay, verse 17. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. So Lazarus has been dead and buried four days. 
Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So we know that there are those Jews, not all Jews, of course, uh, who were in Jerusalem seeking to kill Jesus. And some of the Jews from Jerusalem are here in Bethany. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now this is the verse that gets me. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. That's powerful. Martha's brother, Lazarus, has been dead for four days. I don't know of another case in which Jesus heals someone who's been dead for four days. Uh, and yet, Martha just has faith, knowing that Jesus' will has been to heal, having seen him healed many, having known that he said that he came to give life and life to the full, as just happened in the previous chapter. Martha says, even now, despite all the odds, despite the fact that my brother is dead, I know who you are. And so, even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, so Martha gets this, well, what's he talking about? Is he saying now or is he talking about the resurrection? She's, so she's testing the waters here a bit. And she, says, Martha, and she says, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So she's asking Jesus, what kind of he will rise again? And Jesus said to her, we're now in verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I want to recite that verse again. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to, to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Our Lord weeps with us. He enters into our suffering with us. This is the God of the universe who entered into the world to bear our sins for us, to heal our diseases for us. He knows he has overcome, and he will overcome, and yet he still weeps alongside us. He loves us that much. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? So once again, it's kind of this skepticism, this critical skepticism of, of Jesus. Uh, he's done X, Y, and Z. Can he also do A, B, and C? Uh, he, he healed a blind man, can have kept Lazarus from dying, uh, but this was for the glory of God. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, so Jesus is all kinds of deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. So these are the very people who have been doubting who Jesus is. And Jesus is showing them, look, I am of God. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, his face wrapped with the cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Even now, four days after, 
the man has been dead. Jesus raises him from the dead. This is the God we believe in. This is the God who raises even the dead. Look, if you are ill, like I am, and you've been given a death sentence, like I have, when do we give up hope? When do we give up hope for the miraculous healing? I'm not talking about when do we give up hope for the afterlife. That's a separate question. Um, and of course, the answer to that is you don't. But in this case, the scriptural example here to bring glory to God through the illness was a dead man being raised from the dead. Not suffering well, but actually dying and being raised. The miracle. That's what this verse is talking about. Again, suffering well glorifies God. But in this case, how was God to be glorified by this illness? Because Lazarus would die and then be healed. Now, if you are ill and you have been given a death sentence as I have, and I know some of you watching may have been as well. We keep asking for the miracle. We keep praying for the miracle till our last breath, till our last moment, because even four days after that, we can still be raised. I believe in a God who's able to raise even the dead, not just on the last day. Yes, on the last day, he will raise us. I'm not denying that. But the scriptural example we have here is of a God who raises people even when they die before the last day. And if we're to have hope in this God, we cannot give up. Even when our first line treatment fails, even when it looks like, yeah, medically speaking, there's no option. We keep hoping. That's the example I have in scripture. Now you, if you want to, can come up with some reason to explain away scripture and to say, no, that doesn't apply for us today. I see no reason to do that mutilation to scripture. Our God heals even today. I know it. I have friends who have prayed over people and have raised them from the dead. I've talked about some of them before. My friend AJ, whose daughter was being written a certificate of death when she was being delivered, he prayed over her. And the moment he said, in Jesus' name, I speak life over your body, she was raised from the dead. I have another friend who went to India to preach the gospel. And while there in a Muslim city was able to pray over a dead boy and he was raised from the dead. I have another friend, Craig Keener, whose sister-in-law, I believe um, he's written about it in his book, Miracles, was raised from the dead. I heard a story today from my friend, Daniel Kalenda, who prayed over a young boy and he was raised from the dead. And they actually have video of his mom testifying to that happening the very next day in front of thousands, plus an usher who saw it happen. Look, people are raised from the dead even today. I believe it. Scripture gives us an account of it happening. And nowhere does it tell us that this would stop happening. In fact, the disciples were commissioned with healing the sick, casting out demons, and raising the dead. And it was never said to the disciples, hey, this is just for you, not your followers, just you. Mm -mm, that was never said. In fact, we're going to come to a fantastic verse in a few chapters where it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do also the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do. John 14, 12. Um, you can do scriptural gymnastics to avoid what Jesus is saying. I'm going to take Jesus' word and treat it honestly. What's my point? Never give up hope. Never give up hope. No matter what the doctor has said, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will always have hope till your last breath. And that's where I am. Yeah, the first line treatment failed. Yeah, I was kind of shaken. Yes, last week was rough. But I know this God. And there's always hope. I'm going in for chemo tomorrow. Um, my doctors have scheduled me for it. They didn't even tell me. They just kind of looked at my MD Anderson app. There's an app on MD Anderson uh, that the hospital has. And if you look at your schedule, uh, it'll show you what you're scheduled for. I, I was just checking to see what time my appointment was tomorrow um, because I'm going to talk with the doctor about second line treatments. Um, and uh, not only did I see a doctor's appointment scheduled there, I also saw chemo scheduled there. Uh, so apparently I'm starting chemo again tomorrow. 
So back to the nausea, back to whatever else. I don't even know what kind of chemo it is, so I don't know what the side effect profile will be. Uh, will I lose my hair this time? Who knows? Um, we'll find this all out, but, uh, but God is good, and I will hope, not in the chemo, but in Him. Um, not in the chemo, but in God. Uh, and for those of you who, who would say, Nabil, chemo is poison. Don't put poison in your body. Uh, I'll address that another day. I thank you for your concern, but I'll address that another day. Let's go back to this verse. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I have just said that Jesus is a God who heals. Uh, I never would have said that growing up. But upon investigation uh, and critical reasoning, and not just believing the Bible, I didn't believe the Bible growing up, but upon investigation, I came to the conclusion, and this is a video for another day, uh, that who Jesus is, is God himself. I don't know Muslims don't understand how Christians often mean the term son of God, and so I'm just going to take care of that issue by saying he is God himself, entered into this world to destroy the works of Satan, so that we might have life and life to the full. And he demonstrates that in this case by raising Lazarus from the dead. This is the God who actually exists. And he tells us that if we believe in him, we shall never die. In other words, we will live eternally with God in heaven. Do you believe this? Jesus asks in John eleven twenty six. I'm asking you this now. Do you believe this? Because death will come. Um, it might come at the ripe old age of 82, 83. Uh, scripture tells us the years of our life are 70, or by reason of strength, 80. That's Psalm 90, verse 10. So you might make it to 70, you might make it to 80, and that would be fantastic. Uh, you might be like me, and get, being given a diagnosis, wherein you're given nine months to live. I know initially I'd said a year and a half to two years, but that was assuming stage three. Stage four is nine months. Um... But it might be that you get in a car accident tomorrow and you have nine seconds to live before it's the end. Um, there's no telling how long it's going to be before we die. And we all will die. But what Jesus is telling us is though we die, we may live. Uh, that's the verse before, verse 25. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I haven't done this in a previous video, but I just want to give you the opportunity to realize uh, this is what it's all about. You have this life to seek God. And you can use your free will to do that or to chase after other things. Or because your whole family is Muslim uh, or Hindu or whatever, uh, you might never even bother to seek God. You might just want to appease them. Or you might be raised in that tradition and find it good enough. Uh, or you might just be so convinced that you never bother to ask God himself, hey, who are you really? I am a firm believer that if you earnestly seek God, you will find him. In fact, Jeremiah tells us that. The book of Hebrews tells us that. If you earnestly seek him, you will find him. He will let you find him, is how it will happen. He will draw near to you. Do you know him? Do you believe this? It is my prayer that you do. And if you don't and want to, join with me now. Father God, I thank you that we can have hope till the last second, till the last breath. I thank you, God, that you're a God who raises people from the dead. Yes, in the resurrection, but also now. God, I believe in my healing. I do. And the reason why is because of your scripture, because of the time that I've had with you in prayer, and also because of the words that others have spoken to me. I believe a miracle will happen, and I stand on that, God. But were I and everyone around me to be wrong about that, I know I will be with you for all eternity. Because I believe this. I believe that you are Lord. And I believe that you have paid for our sins so that we can be with you eternally. That God, it's not that you may forgive us sometime in the future. You have forgiven us 2,000 years ago on the cross. And we receive that payment. And we receive life with you forever. I pray that for my brothers and sisters who are watching this, who may not believe you. Uh, if they're Jewish, God, I have tremendous respect for the Jewish faith. I have tremendous respect for Jews 
Uh, and I just ask you, God, to move in their heart that they would know that this rabbi, Jesus, was not just a rabbi, but he was God himself, the rabbi, the teacher, the Passover lamb, the ram that was promised when Abraham saw in the Akedah, a, a, a ram caught in a thicket. God had said to Abraham that he would provide a lamb for the sacrifice. And this is the lamb who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus. For my Jewish friends watching this, I pray that they would realize this, that they would receive him. For my Muslim friends watching this, I have tremendous respect for Muslims who honor God as best as they know how through praying and through, uh, through, uh, through rituals, through traditions, they try their best to honor God. I just come here to boldly proclaim that God revealed himself 600 years before Islam, that he came into this world. And I pray that they would seek and find that God, because if they seek, they shall find. If they ask, they shall receive. If they knock, the door shall be opened. Jesus himself said this. I pray for life to reign. God, use this video. I feel kind, kind of silly speaking to a camera as if I were speaking to people. Uh, but Lord, I know that you can use even this kind of a video to reach many. So God, I pray that you would open hearts and bring this video to the right people, that people may have hope through their treatment and also that people may come to find you. We love you, God, and we're so, so grateful that you, Jesus, are our God, the triune God. Of course, Father, you are God and Holy Spirit within us, you are God. One God, not three, but one, our God greater than we can possibly imagine, greater than our comprehension, saved us and has brought us life. Thank you, God, and thank you that we can trust in you. I'm believing for a miracle. I'm believing for it for my brothers and sisters. I'm gonna pray for it right now. Lord, if there are people watching this video who need a miracle, myself as well, I pray through your compassion, just as you wept multiple times in John chapter 11, I'm sorry, just as you were moved to compassion multiple times in John chapter 11 and you wept, for your people who are hurting and weeping. God, I pray, move in your compassion now and heal people who are watching this video now. I don't know how it works. God, transcending space and time through digital media, don't know how it works, but you're able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. And I pray that there would be a testimony from this video that by watching it, people were healed, not by me, but by you, God. So Father, please, in the name of your Son, who heals people, who is our healer, in the name of Jehovah Rapha, in the name of the God who, according to Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, took our infirmities and bore our diseases. I pray for healing to fall upon people watching this video now. I don't understand, Lord, if that's theologically what you would have us pray, but I'm praying it in faith, God. I believe it is, and I'm praying it in faith. God, I pray that you would heal. I pray that even as I watch this video to see the quality of it, that I would be healed, God. And I pray that others would be healed as well. And even more so, Lord, I pray that people would be saved for all eternity. Thank you, God. We love you. We praise you. And we lift this all up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, that felt good. <laughs> ah, this was fun. Um, I like teaching. I haven't been able to do much of it. And... Um, I don't know if I will be able to do much of it going forward. Um, the pains have been spreading in my body. Um, the pains in my chest have been spreading, the pains in my back, uh, and I know there was no node found on my back in the, in the PET scan, um, but for some reason my back has been hurting. Uh, my lungs have been short of breath, um, but there was no node found uh, in my lungs. I don't know. Um, what the future holds for me. I believe there's a healing there. I honestly do. But in the meantime, will I be able to teach? I don't know. So maybe I'll try to find ways to do it online. Uh, please pray for me for wisdom. If you have advice, please give it. I love receiving it. Uh, even if I don't agree with you, and with a lot of you I don't, uh, but I'm still very thankful for you to pray for, prayerfully give me advice. So thank you guys. God bless you. Um, I'm going to cut this off before it gets to 25 minutes. So uh, I love you. I really do. Um, and I pray that we will have many, many years together to continue talking about the Word of God and about what He wants to do in your life. So we'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.